Now looking at the United Nations building beside the peaceful East River on the island of Manhattan, USA. A building representing the 20th century's hopes for a future of international peace, security, cooperation and brotherhood for all mankind. This is the Opera House on wide, busy Van Ness Avenue in San Francisco, California. Here are gathered diplomats from over 45 countries of the earth joining together to sign a peace treaty with the Japanese nation. A treaty signed in mutual honor and respect by men consecrated to the purposes and ideals of the United Nations. This, however, is the Los Alamos proving ground in New Mexico, where the first atomic explosion was detonated. And this is Hiroshima, a once bustling city almost wholly destroyed as a direct consequence of this atomic experiment. Here are the trains of the future, streamlined in shining steel, linking all corners of the land in comfort and safety. The planes of the future, swift, sure, dependable, flying ambassadors of goodwill and mutual understanding among men. These boys and girls, the men and women of the future, eager to keep their heritage of freedom and liberty. And here in the quiet of the South Seas Lagoon, off the island of Bikini, is the promise of that future. A mushroom cloud, which has become as much a symbol of the 20th century as the United Nations building on the far different island of Manhattan. For the time being, the giant powers in this mushroom cloud remain firmly in the hands of a peace-loving people. But the United Nations building can be blown to bits. Blood can wash away the ink on peace signatures. This, we must remember, and therefore, we who control the weapons of peace must be forever on guard to guarantee to the world that the forces for good will never be turned into forces for evil. If we relax, lose our strength, our preparedness, what you are about to see is what might happen. For this is a picture which shows a world without law and order. A dim, distant future world? Yes. An imaginary and fictional world? Yes but possibly the world of 3000 A.D., a world we must not let happen. Desolation, these twisted steel skeletons are what at the time of our story remain of that fabulous metropolis, New York City. A once proud, once beautiful city now torn and devastated. Crumbling ruins on a dry and burned out land. And even now in this year 3000, through these ashes of a bygone age, stalk an enemy led by Gordon, their chief. Men of ill will marching to dominate those few human beings who still cling to the dream of peace. These are the upriver men. This face staring at the invaders, these tortured eyes, this seared skin, this mouth twisted by evil men's misuse of atomic power. These are the innocent victims of the black century. A people living in fear and terror, but yet with a burning hope that someday peace and right will return to the shattered land. These are the mutates. Finally across the river and far beneath the earth, in the rocky caves of what was once a great subway system, live those who have miraculously escaped the ravages of a mishandled atomic power. Much of what the 20th century offered, science, education, a true religion, a will to learn, has been lost in the rubble of the past. 
but still some traces of civilization remain. Somehow these people have managed to retain a love of life even amidst death. These are the Norns. Tonight in particular, joy reigns among the Norns, for the son of their chief is to be wed, even while the mutates cower in the ruins and the upriver men bent on further destruction are on the march. Yes, this is New York, the island of Manhattan, 3000 AD. A world of what could be if, unprepared and unaware, we ever permit the enemies of civilization to control the weapons of peace. What have you got there, Jason? Game. Seems we have plenty. There are more guests arriving. More? Who? Gordon, chief of the upriver norm men, has begged permission to come with gifts for your son. That murdering bandit? But it was your own edict which said that all men were welcome to your son's wedding feast. Denying Gordon would deny your own promised word. Well, let him come. But make certain his men are without weapons. Watch them closely. Give the game to the women. Smells good. But on the night of my son's wedding, shouldn't you be out enjoying yourself? I'd rather do this. What do you say to that, Ruth? Have all young people changed since my day? Your day? Oh, you're just trying to get me to flatter you by telling you how young you look. Oh, no, you don't. I only wish I were 30 years younger, or even 20. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, these birds will make great eating for my wedding feast. No problem? And I say there's not a marksman on the land that can place an arrow in the wind and get such game. <laughs> Who taught you to shoot like that? You did, remember? Come away. Did you hear anything? No. Yeah. Footsteps. Come on. Gordon and some of his men. Look at this thing. Six fingers on each hand. Ah, it sickens me. I didn't know you had such a weak stomach. Soon mended. What, my stomach? No, the hand. <laughs> We're outnumbered. Besides, it's only mutate. Yeah, but he's not the law of our land. Looks a little more normal now. At least on the right hand. <laughs> Who interferes in the justice towards a mutate? On this land, only one man hands out justice. My father. You are Eric's son. Well met, Rob. I'm Gordon, chief of the upriver men, on my way to your wedding feast. Why? By whose invitation? Your father's. We bring gifts. Best of all, a gift of peace. Peace for all time. It takes armed men to bring such a gift? These, just my guard. The country's dangers with mutations and bandits. Yes, I've heard there are quite a few bandits and cutthroats about. Since I don't want your safety on my conscience, you needn't come any further. Your father would be disappointed. Neither would he wish to insult me. He tells the truth. Don't offend him. What about all these armed guards of yours? They were returning just as soon as they saw me across the border of your land. Then they linger unnecessarily. My personal servant, Dambridge. His weapon. Of course. We come in peace and friendship. To your homes. Let me run my knife through the ribs of this dirty mutate. Let him go. You spoil the tribe. The only good mutate is a dead one. We all know that. This is my wedding day. He shall go free. Well, on your way, if you wish to live. What are you doing here? Bringing Catherine her wedding dress. She's bathing. Get about your business. Me. 
Not waiting for me, were you? Yes. You seem rather abrupt today. It wouldn't be because this is my wedding day, would it? That's really flattering. It might have been ours. Oh, it is too bad you are not the chief's son. It's too bad you are the daughter of the high priest. Ah, uh, but don't rub it in. I know my place. And just where is that? Here. <laughs> you know what would happen to you if Rob saw you? Yes. To both of us. I'm going to be the wife of the chief's son, so don't be a fool. Until after Rob and I are married. I can be patient. Up to a point. My master, Gordon, of the Upriver Men. Welcome. How far do these things run? Well, no one knows. Miles, probably. They're mostly caved in. Can't understand why you live down here. Plenty of shelter above ground. Well, in the early days, right after the dark century, it was crawling with atomic radiation up there. No weapons are carried today, Gordon. Just an ornament. Come, Rob. Sure. Have all the arrangements been completed for the feast? I attended to them personally. Then the blacksmith's daughter said that Perhaps rumor has slandered Gordon. He seems to mean no harm. I'd still feel a lot more comfortable if he hadn't come. No, not all those tales can be exaggerated. He can do nothing, unarmed and with only one man.
I'll take care of Eric, the son for you. Yours is Bram, who sticks to him like a burr. Stop her. Never mind, she's through. All well? Yes. Hold your men here till the end of the dance, then come fast. sign of Gordon or his men. That's right. Listen. That's nothing. We've put plenty of distance between us and any pursuit by now. Perhaps I'm wrong. But you keep going. If we're being stalked, draw them after you. What are you going to do? I'll catch up with you later. Start walking. Right. No one ever spared one of us. I said hold. You shall not kill. It is our law, if not theirs. Fine words. Mercy to a norm. Go on and kill. You'll get no sport from me, no matter how long you keep me alive. We don't torture captives. We leave that for our superiors. You know it. Don't mistake this for any plea. But I've never killed a man who has not first sought to kill me. He's a norm, and therefore a liar. My name is Ridden, chief of my tribe. Yes, I've seen you before. Only a few days ago, you uh, tossed me my life like a bone to a dog. I thought I knew you. Quick, Gordon and his men are coming. Looking for us? No, for us. You, why? Tonight, he attacked our people. He killed my father. Now he wants to complete the job. I won't have your blood on my hands, whether you're gnomes or not. Come with us. Wait! This secret is known only to the Council of Three and those who serve it. The Elders will not look with favor upon disclosing it to norms. I am above the Council of Three. It's their privilege to depose you. Only by trial of arms. With death to the loser. I'll take that chance. Well, where does it lead to? To our country. Closely, we've guarded the river, but still they've managed to sneak over on raids. Through here is how they must have done it. Whatever the fate of these norms, they can never be allowed to return to their own country with this secret. I know. Enter. goes all the way into the river to the opposite shore? Yes, to our country. Your people did not build this themselves. No, we found it by chance and have been using it for generations. I remember my grandfather telling me that long ago the ancients had the secret of such things. Well, it didn't do much good. Come on.
they got away? Not too far, I warrant. They must carry wounds. We'll organize a hunting party and run them to Earth in due time. That'll be great sport. We have much to thank you for, it seems, Jason. I wonder if you'd be as happy if there was no reward in my victory. You wouldn't cheat me. Have no fear. I would be less the man if I didn't grant you all that you deserve. It was Eric's chair, wasn't it? Yes. And the girl. I'm a man of my word. The chair of the chief and the woman, Catherine. To the dark goddess of the seven black depths whom we worship. Let none put us under that which I join in unity. Lest the curse be pronounced upon him forever and ever. The woman is yours. Now for the chair of the chief. This proves my given word to Jason that for the services he rendered my purpose, he would have this woman and be given a seat in the chair of the chief. You will all bear witness that Gordon of the upriver men has kept his word. You will all bear witness that to my friend and ally Jason has been given this woman he coveted and the chair of the chief. I bear witness. Bear once, always a betrayer. But bear witness of He was given this woman, and he sat in the chair of the chief. judged for the cruelty and terror our people have suffered at the hands of the norms. Do you deny our right? I answer for them. I deny this right you take upon yourselves. You have betrayed the secret entrance to the river cave. Your life may only be bought with the death of these norms. These men befriended me. And Gordon sought to kill me as he did Bowmaker. This man forced him to spare me. We don't ask for gratitude, only for justice. Your people have suffered, it's true. But we have only slain when you have tried to seize our women. Not for the lust of killing. If we cannot have norm women to mate with, how may we ever hope to erase the blight our people have been tainted with for so long? It's self-defense. It is only what any man would do. Are we not flesh and blood? Do we not love and hate? Are we not born as you, die as you? Have we souls less than yours because our bodies are cursed? This frightful legacy of that dark century when man loosed the terror of atomic destruction upon the world. For a thousand years, the norms have sought to kill our spirit as men and human beings. It is a worse deed than taking our lives. Their silence condemns them. We are dirt beneath their feet, and they'd keep us that way. I say destroy them before they destroy us. There is law here. The first man to touch them, I slay with my own hands. All that has been said here is truth. Our lives have been grim and hard. The gnomes have slain us in passion and cold blood. But there is one difference between our people and theirs. We have kept our faith. When the gnomes cried that God had deserted man to wreak such vengeance on him in the days of the dark century and turned to the devil for consolation, we kept our faith. We have believed in justice. They bowed to might alone. Now these gnomes did not come as enemies, with sword in hand and bloodlust in their hearts. They fled to us for sanctuary. For they have learned what persecution and injustice is. Shall we then sink to the level of the norms? Judge them as we would ourselves be judged. Do unto others as we would have others do unto us. Search your hearts and let your words be dressed in truth.
The council is ready with its verdict. Your lives have been given you. In turn, you must give us your oath to abide with us forever. Live here, in exile? The secret of the cave beneath the river must remain with us. And we're never to return to our own people. Death may be preferable to a life in exile away from everything one holds dear. The decision is yours. Give us a week to make up our minds. Will you give me your solemn promise not to attempt to escape? A promise from those who worship the devil? It's a promise broken before given. It's madness to put trust where the word is unknown. Man's heart may show more honor than man's belief. You have my word. Yes, and mine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. He's lucky Gordon didn't order his execution. What do you have there? Milk. Bring me some. I'm not your servant. Everyone serves me. And if they have any other ideas, they soon learn. Gordon will not always rule this tribe, then you may learn. It's about time you started learning. What's the trouble? She asked me for some milk. Well, give it to her. With pleasure. How's the air up there? Cleaner. We come before you to seek permission to marry. Your name? Dirk, son of Weaver. And yours? Libby, daughter of Milford. How are you both classified? Fourth degree. You know the law. None may be given permission to take husband or wife below second degree. We love each other. Your duty is to your people. And what is their duty to us? To give hope that in time we may be as others of the Lord's children, free from the curse of our fathers. In time, a hundred years, a thousand, perhaps never. What is that to those who can only live one life? Much. To those whose lives are yet to be lived. Then you deny us? You will not let us? My son, I know your torment. It is just part of what all our tribe suffers. You cannot marry and produce children who would prove abominations even in the sight of their parents. Our law may be harsh, but it is wise. Where there is no hope, there must be sacrifice. For where there is sacrifice, will always be hope. Sabron? What's the matter? I'm worried about Ritten. Grown soft, seeks to deliver us to the norms. You dream. A dream, you say? Look how he pled for the lives of those norm captives before the Council of Three. Yes. That was something I didn't relish. Why spare them? They've never spared any of us. Hmm. They've danced with glee to see our blood flow. Get ridden as our chief. His word is our obedience. Need not be. That's the law. Listen to me, Sabron. Ridden is a slave to peace. And those who strive for peace above honor gain nothing but destruction for themselves and those that follow them. It's true. Well, then speak to the other warriors. Tell them how Ridden betrays them in his weakness. 
be my friend and you'll profit. When I sit in Ridden's chair. In Ridden's chair? You know the law, Ridden can only be overthrown in personal combat by one who seeks to take his place. I am prepared to meet him. All I need is sanction. I will speak to the men. Good. And if they're of your mind, have them meet me tonight by the river. Good wine. We make it from wild berries picked in the spring. How is it that uh, you have no woman of your own? To help bring another into the world like ourselves? Yes, but you're less marked than any of your people. You know, you could almost pass for a... a... norm? A doubtful compliment. Yes, I suppose I deserve that. Perhaps it is because I've never fallen in love that you see no woman living beneath my roof. Well, falling in love isn't hard. I've done it many times myself. <laughs> <laughs> Too many, judging by the trouble you've been in. Well, that's part of the business, Rob. Do you ever know anybody in love not to have trouble? Although sometimes I think it's more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> love in our country is from man's need, and little else. His loneliness seeks comfort. And he closes his eyes to the horror he perpetuates. Well, perhaps in time... Our only hope is the norm women. But what of love or hope of freedom from the taint can they give us when they're taken by force? It's against nature. Those of our women your men have married, uh, has there ever been a... Clean child? Sometimes I think it's past repair. That we do what's left to the world and ourselves a favor by... Mass suicide. Well, that's no solution. What is? Hope. Sometimes I think that died long ago. Well, what nature has done, nature can undo. It is nature who has continued what man began, with the result that most of us have to even mask our disfigurement from each other. No, man cannot flout God. The Lord is merciful, but even his patience can end, and punishment be bitter. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah felt his hand in the far days. He visited his wrath upon man again in the 20th century. Perhaps now he has deserted man for good. Well, that's what our fathers taught us. That's why we turn to the devil and worship him. He's proved himself stronger than God. His works endure. What of God's handiwork remains? God works in strange and mysterious ways his wonders to perform. My people remain in suffering and anguish. It was from another's great torment that a faith rose, a great faith. Perhaps we may be as he, traveling our own road to Calvary. Out of great agonies, new hope is born. You wait a day. What's wrong? The staff of challenge. What does that mean? Someone seeks my place as chief of the tribe. I have to find the mate to this. We planted in front of the house of the one who has challenged me. You mean to fight? And who loses, dies. Anyone who just gets a notion can challenge you? But sanction. That means he'd be given the right to make the attempt by popular agreement. Evidently, my people question my fitness to be their chief.
satisfied? Get up. Go. That's a mistake. The man will be twice his enemy. Taking a long time. Patience. Tell me, Sebron, this norm woman you're with, did she learn to love you? I'm a mutation. She could never forget she was seized by force. of the norm women seized during the winter to be delivered of child. There's only one answer. How do things look on the other side? Most of Gordon's men are off hunting. There are only a few guards about. Sentries? Taking easy. Come on. I do everything myself? Lead, conquer, protect? Isn't there no one I can depend on? The day I take away from this place, mutates swoop down to seize women right under your nose. I never thought they'd have the courage to pit themselves against anyone under our protection. If these norms that we've conquered begin to think we can't protect them against the mutates, what's to prevent them thinking we can't protect ourselves against them? Let's wipe out that mutate settlement once and for all. Ah, the disfigured dogs are too crafty. We wouldn't get within two miles of their kennels before one of their outposts had spot us and had the whole pack yapping at our heels. Here's one of them. I was not one of the raiders. I came to warn you. But they beat me here. You obscene gob of filth. I'll feed that lying tongue of yours to my hunting dogs. We did not capture this mutate. He surrendered. I know Gordon has no love for my people. And I share your hatred. I can serve you well. No better than I can serve myself. I have a secret that you've long sought for. Give me a chance to tell it. If you hope to buy your life, the price had better be good. If I can tell you how to beat the mutations without the loss of a single man, would you say I had no cause to bargain? Get up. Price? The chair of the chief of my people, when you've done with them. To be your tongue and right arm over them. Leave us. Now, when you've chased our men after a raid, why is it you've always lost their trail? Because being more animal than human, you have the cunning of beasts. 
This cunning you speak of. It's no more than a secret cave that runs under the river into our land. Beneath the river? If you lie to me... I'll take you there. You can see for yourself. What are you called? Carver. I give you your life. The way I live it now makes the gift of small value. You shall be chief of your people when I have conquered them. Gordon's right arm, the land of the mutates. Nobody's going to hurt you. Don't fear. You find me so horrible? Where are you taking us? To our settlement. Tell me, why were you caged like an animal? What was your crime? There was no crime except hatred of Gordon. Well, that, if nothing else, should make us friends. I see no cave. The bush conceals it. So that's how they do it. This is an ambush. You can kill me first. Keep your knife at his back. At any sign of treachery, let him have your first thrust. You're wasting time, Gordon. The raiders have to travel slowly because of the women they've got with them. We can go on through and lie and wait for them to come up to us. Why do you seize us for your wives when you have women of your own to choose from? Choose? What hope is there for the mutates and their own women? What children may we hope to bring into the world? Hideous copies of ourselves to live despised outcasts. Our only hope is... You shrink from me. Am I so different from the other men you've known? Please, I could never... You could never love such as I, that is what you couldn't say. Yet it can only be with your help that the future may hold any hope for us to purge our blood of this blemish. Please. serve humanity, then. 
If it is a sacrifice, it will serve as atonement for what the norms have caused us to suffer for centuries. We're going back now. to escape. How were they able to ambush you? Slow as you may have had to travel because of the women, still it would have taken them hours since they had to cross the river first. They came by the river cave. We were betrayed. Betrayed? Who was this traitor? Carver. He was with them and joined them in fighting us. He shall die. He did not survive his treachery. I cut him down. Now that Gordon knows the secret of the river cave, he can attack with full force right at your front door. Then what of Ridden? They've taken him prisoner. That means torture. We'll get him back. Uh, that's what they'll expect. There are guards everywhere. Yes, all along the route of the river cave. But this is one time we'll take the long way, across the water instead of under it. How many men can you count on to make the attempt? Few are left. I could get word to the other settlements. That'll take too long. Ridden may be dead by then, maybe by now. Get all the men you can. Wait till that moon goes down. But Ridden, what about him? That's a chance we'll have to take. If we're seen before we reach Gordon's cave, we'll never get him out alive. We'll probably throw away our own lives. Go see if there are any sentries posted this far up river. All right. Catherine. Bram. Oh, Bram. What are you doing here? I ran away. Gordon? I couldn't stand his abuse and cruelty any longer. It gives him pleasure to inflict pain on others. He's worse than an animal. You could have spared yourself. Please, don't reproach me, Bram. Oh, what a blind, insincere, greedy fool I've been. That's an opinion I won't quarrel with. What about Rob? Is he... Alive and well, no fault of yours. Oh, I'm so glad. I couldn't have stood it if... to know that... Oh, Bram, I didn't realize... What misery it would bring to so many. No use wailing about it now. The thing to do is to repair the damage if it can be done. And that's what we're hoping. We? Come on. I can forgive you. There's no hatred in me for what you've done. Gordon has avenged me amply. I'm even sorry for that. When you left the city, Ed Gordon returned with the mutate he captured with Ruth and the girls. The one he called Ridden? That's him. Yes. Where is he? What have they done with him? Put him under guard. Danbridge wanted to kill him right away. But Gordon decided to wait until tomorrow and have him executed slowly before all of the people as an object lesson to anyone else who sets himself against the upriver men. Did you see any sentries on your way here? Quite a few. Wait. I know of a path left unguarded. I can guide you. Fine. Gordon will be expecting a rescue party. He'll be prepared for one. But if only two men slip into the city... Two men? Yes, you and I. We'll have a much better chance of reaching Ridden. What about these mutates? I have a job for them in the river cave. Doing what? Well, I once heard an old tale. It had to do with the soldiers of a wicked king who were chasing a persecuted people fleeing from slavery across the bottom of the sea whose waters had parted to let them through. When they reached safety, the waves fell back upon the evil ones and destroyed them. That's the story of the Israelites told in the good book. Well, wherever it came from, we can hope to destroy our enemies in the same way. Well, that is a tale of magic and miracles. Well, perhaps. But our story will be one of minds and muscle. All right, men. Now listen closely. 
We're almost home. I never thought we'd be back so soon after being captured by the mutates. Least of all, trying to rescue a mutate from our own people. We'd better be going. You guided us well. Oh, it's the least I can do to make up for what I've done to you. And what you still hope to do to us. Uh, Rob, get you're crazy. What are you doing? Let me go. Let me go. Rob, I'll tell you in a minute. Come here. Tie her up. What's the matter with you, Rob? Are you out of your head? I would be if I let her and Gordon play such a trick on us. Trick? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. A neat little trap. And here's the bait. Don't you see how easy it's been for us to get so close into the city? Gordon's no fool, and he doesn't take the mutates for fools. He knows we'd never use that river cave now. Then why no sentries along the way? He's figuring on drawing us into a trap and then killing us at his convenience. The last man. And this? Save your sympathy. These scars are as easy to take off as they were to put on. Fake. What made you suspect her? A leopard may change its spots easier than an evil woman her instincts. Why then should she feel such remorse at this time? <laughs> Leave her to the devil. But the devil takes care of its own. Well, I, I didn't mean it like that. I... Heresy. Has living with the mutates converted you to their belief? Brom! The mutates may have a heart, but they have no head. Mercy is misguided. Ridden gave it to that traitor Carver. Look at the trouble we're having. No. Any sign of life? There were two guards at the mouth of the river cave. No others? I scouted over 500 yards in a wide circle. No others. Gordon has every man lying in wait for us somewhere. Wherever they are, it's not near the river cave. Come on. Stay on watch and keep your ears open. The river will come through once these supports are withdrawn. Take little to do that. A few hefty knocks to dislodge them at the base and... Right. You work on those men, but be careful. Loosen them so they'll all fall at the right time. Gordon makes it inviting for visitors, huh? <laughs> hospitable, isn't he? What? It's not too hospitable. See that vine? Kick that vine, you'll have an arrow in your chest. Yeah, probably poison, too. Nice reception Gordon's planning. Yeah. Careful. The woods are probably full of these. Hey, Brown. Remember when I was a boy and we used to explore those holes that led to the surface of the ground? Yeah. I often wondered what they used them for in the olden times. Well, maybe to carry water, judging by the broken pieces of pipe in them. But you know, there are a lot of those holes that even our own people never knew existed. Let alone a newcomer like, like Gordon. Yeah. You mean we might find a way through one of them? No sense in walking right into his arms if we can surprise him. Huh? Leave the way. Catherine missed them. No, I'm in saw them cross the river. She couldn't have missed them. Do you trust her completely? I don't trust any woman completely. She's enough like me to be trusted in this business. She's a wench greedy for power. Who else can give it to her? I 
have brought you food. Did Gordon send it? No. I wanted to... How did you pass the guards? They're gone. Has Gordon ceased to value me? No. The passages are swarming with men. What are they all doing? I don't know. There was a great commotion. Now they seem to be waiting for something. It's quiet now. Strangely quiet. He ordered all of my people into the inner passages. He threatened death to any who leave without permission. You took this risk to bring food to a man as good as dead? There was no risk, as long as I remained unseen. You have a heart unusual among your people. I'm only a mutate. Why should you? Yes, a mutate. And a human being. A man. That is how you think of me. You could forget this. in the woods when you, when you tried to run away. I saw only what I'd been told to see. I know now that if the mutates are outcasts, it's only because the norms have made them so. To hear a norm speak such words. This is the glimmer of light in the heavens my people have looked for these past centuries of darkness. Whatever happens to me, Spread this word. Man was born in brotherhood, and in brotherhood must live. If he is not to die in chaos. Promise me, Ruth. Promise me. I promise. Get out of here. The cave is full of Gordon's men. Something's broken. That's all right. There's a crowd of your men holding up in the river cave waiting for us. I likely have a long wait for me. Not if I can help it. These bars are half eaten through with rust. Watch the passageway. I'm about to make a little noise. gone by this time. Sound the alarm. Hurry the passageway. They'll head straight for that river cave. Get every man. We'll run them into that mutate village if we have to and burn them out. Like Gordon knows we're heading for the river cave. We're all set for it. Oh. Almost 
there. They're making straight for that river camp. husband of her own will, with love in her heart. Our father, who died for us, from love he was born. And from this union now, perhaps the time of our own freedom begins. For what is conceived in love can be nothing of good. Amen. 